gaming with me is Team Gamer. And Peter will be coming in just a moment. We um, had a little technical difficulty. Yeah, had some technical difficulties. Missed. We had to reboot things multiple times so we get the like, audio back. Sorry, I missed a few a few games. I only missed a few games. It's, it's like five minutes, six minutes. So we probably missed someone's intro about the what this is. This is Gorilla Collective Day One. This is Summer Games Fest Day One. Gorilla Collective is the first thing on the day. Okay, so Summer Game Fest Day One. And then we'll have HC One at One. So pretty cool. It's a little floating UFO light. Reminds me of that one Wii U game. Yeah. Bird. Oh yeah. You're flying around. Yeah, I remember that bird game. Yeah, it's a bird. XO One coming 2020. Uh, there's also that uh, VR Eagle game. Yeah, but that one was made by Ubisoft. World, World premiere. premiere. World premiere. Oh, it's uh -oh. in. Alright, so I guess we're gonna have to. Xbox. We started the kind of funny game showcase. We started the kind of funny game showcase in 2018 as a way to use our platform to make sure indie games weren't lost in the wake of big budget titles. That's why teaming up with the mix for the Gorilla Collective made so much sense. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the mix, Justin Woodward. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. We started the mix in 2012 with the goal of helping to create new ways for developers to get visible in their games. Looks kind of like a rapper. Is really an evolution of that. Like a rapper kind of. Where developers large and small showcase their games. Justin, you're a developer yourself. Why are indie games so important? Well, Greg, indie games are so he can do what he loves doing. The experiences that independent game developers invest their blood, sweat, and tears to create. How like us of all our videos. Entertainment in the form of narrative, art, tech, and game design to new heights. Exactly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you've got to support your indie devs. Indie devs with hot new titles just like these. Okay. Polygon Treehouse. Grazie is a modern day tale of courage and adventure. I really don't like it. A game about monsters that shouldn't exist. Which one of them is the monster? John Tove, a young girl. I think it's the mushrooms. Magic. The mushrooms are the monsters. Explore an uncharted world of hidden legends. This reminds me of so many indie games I've seen. So many other. Well, I guess I know what this company's all about, indie games. Yes. I don't like indie games anymore. Draw maps, collect curiosities, and 
chart your adventure. Okay. Unveil the story of tragic loss and the path to redemption. Okay. Oh. Bird. Bird. Something tells me this game looks terrifying. Looks terrifying. Terrible. Oh, oh my, my eyes. It's Brandon Lee. That shouldn't exist. The crow. G G4. Rookie. I understand being indie and making your game indie, but do you have to make an indie game too? Um. I don't want to be a stick man in space, no. This store is kind of, this store is kind of a combination of a creation myth and a film noir thriller. Hi, we're Feral Cat 10. Could be on Teams of us. I think I have a camera on a little sideways. Composed of myself. If you look at the. Jeremy, technically. Your camera or your house is sideways. So, in some ways, our game is a traditional point and click in that you know you have the normal click to move your character around the huh? but in a lot of ways it's not um you know we don't really have tricky inventory puzzles where you have to like combine stuff together it's a lot more about just kind of playing in space and the puzzles are meant to it almost looks as good as shelter and a feeling which didn't look that great our emphasis is more on tactile kind of exploratory interactions so you might uh, manipulate a planet's orbit or change the age of a sun. My skill set is definitely more to the animation and graphic design. Jeremy, so make the sun go supernova. Really into that in the game. BJ or generative art. Not only does a very black and white kind of simplify uh, visual representation enable us to kind of explore concepts of uh, on the cosmic scale and in the noir kind of territory. Oh, that's it's awesome also, this one. You know, stuff that we yeah. like making. And, I should have brought something to do. <laughs> So of course we're inspired by you know, the other classic noir films, which usually have pretty jazzy soundtracks. Well, we can't avoid them. 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 If you want to go, you can go. Um, so we partnered with uh, these great musicians and sound designers in London called Stillbar. And they really created this great dynamic soundtrack. Um, and there's a lot of synergy between the two. Well, it's like, it's like everything in life. This too shall so pass. Great, so, like we keep telling your mom of kidney stone, so, this too shall pass. Game? That we've ever made our first. What's your hat say? I'm more interested in that. <laughs> I had wanted to make a, a project together for quite some time. I brought this idea to him, and it was kind of the perfect meeting point of all our different interests. So then we made a little two week demo. He looks like he just woke up. <laughs> I mean, he's like. So that was that went really well. So it was just really encouraging. Genesis Noir is inspired by primarily cosmic comics, oh. but nice. so many other things from Italian film comics. Noir, like the the I didn't know there was such a thing. We're super inspired also jazz. by the world of like jazz, as like Sun Ra, Miles Davis. I am so sorry. Kind of spacier territory that jazz explores. Thanks for checking out Genesis Noir. We're really excited for you to play it. And uh, we look forward to you destroying the Big Bang. Thanks for checking out our game. And we'd love Thanks for checking out Thank you. Enjoy it. We didn't exactly get a choice in doing so. <laughs> coming. I like the pick and choose. Coming fall 2020. Or tour or anything. Another world premiere. World premiere. Product not yet ready. Product oh, not yet ready. Oh, cards. Welcome to Purgatory. The land of Oh gosh. Doors of insanity. What, what do I think this is gonna end badly? Wow, there's a lot of quest of redemption. I like the turtle feel. No defense, just attack. They were carved a path of merciless terror through their enemies. Whoa. Just started. Um, 
Let's try that again. Witness a world where chewing on a boat on the river sticks makes you look like a toast. Oh, language. Profanity. Thrown overboard to hell because you are really, really awesome. Limbo cannot hold you. You deserve paradise. Use your sexy charm. Befriend a scary witch. Master spells with your magnificent mind. Summon awesome allies for your enchanted entourage, and give respect to beings of infinite power. Story, what a cool story! Using a new powerful deck of defense cards, you will block, parry, and repost your way to victory. Were heroes always this fragile? What? Strap yourself in. Again? Summon a 1940s boy band. So this is gonna be hard. You're gonna die all the time. Where evil dies, where everyone dies, and death yes. is futile. Yes. All right. Good card choices. Excellent equipment. Okay. Sound attack. We got this. We have our hero. The only way I play that game is if they pay me. Of insanity. Where no sword is too big. Armor too thin. Ally too obnoxious. It was totally awesome game. You should definitely buy it. Yeah, no. This is the story this of her little juggler's This is the story of her little juggler's girl. Trapped in her life. She wanted to see the world. Alone. Alone. And oops. Not she can't quite alone. <laughs> Not for life. Oh, it looks like a the way things are, are the way things go. I'm all you've got in this forsaken land. So hold back and trust in your narrator's hand. A juggler's tale. Okay. That might be interesting. Oh boy. What is this? Oh boy. Wait, you're on Mel? This one looks familiar. Oh! Is this Mel Carrier Sim? I, I I look forward to um oh, the cat just lays down. <laughs> cat sleep. Let me lay down. I guess it's like a full game ish. I wonder how much money I can lose with crashing into things. <laughs> like small town milk carrier but I mean it's not how milk carriers have a route ghost blasters and yeah, we don't ask the questions okay lake lake how does the name have to do anything to do with the content maybe it centers around that lake maybe oh switch oh urban trial tricky trick 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 tricky oh wait is this gonna be a European game it's gonna be like the trials. Oh. But you can go both directions. I can totally see me and you playing this. Yeah. Totally. Oh, nice tricks. Throw the donut. And do a weird flip. Leave them balloons. This looks fun. Yeah. Miss the money. <laughs> oh. Urban trial tricky. I mean, coming soon, so. Looks like it's not all PC stuff. Yeah, not all. It's not the PC game. Oh, that's true. This one's like exclusive. In Welcome to we Vacation Beach. Verona Beach, Verona Beach. California. 
fighting monsters for money. Except the swords you find in the dungeon can, can also transform into non -binary beautiful non -binary men, women, and non-binary people you can befriend. Ah. There's only ones and zeros in binary. How's he gonna be boyfriend dungeon? You try to get as far yeah. as you can, as you can yeah, in the dungeon this time. But dying's okay, because you can level up too. Okay. Okay. You need to get stronger to go further. To do that, you'll need a closer relationship with your weapon. So the weapon? You spend the game alternating between fighting in the dungeon and hanging out with your weapon. So many, your weapon. Your so many ways this could go bad. I personally get bored I can see so many ways fighting in the dungeon. Also, I get restless if there's too much reading, so we wanted to make a mix of the two. Off to prom. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not playing this game. Here, I'm dating Sundra the Talwar. And, and when we spend we'll enough time together, we'll, we'll, discover we'll discover new abilities we can use in combat. My favorite ability is being installed. Choices to make along the way. Push one button and I'm installing that garbage. Yeah, they don't think they, they couldn't pay me enough for this one. I mean, well, they could. But it'd be a really high price. Different weapons have different preferences for where they want to go on dates, how they want to flirt, and what kinds of gifts they want to receive. They might give you a gift too. Even if they pay me, I don't want to play this one. But I mean, they have to pay me a, 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 more than I would normally charge. Let's just say this isn't the game I want to play. There's a variety of different kinds of people slash weapons to date in Void for Dungeon. So it's up to you who you want to wield and level up your love. Almost looks like an edge. Wait, maybe it is when he's younger. She may have copied the edge's looks. We're getting closer to finishing Boyfriend Dungeon now, and we hope people will love it as much as we do. That's no. You know what Bud and I love? That sounds like your kind of game. That sounds like your kind of game. Sending it back to their um, the website. Yeah. Next. Get this game out of here. I don't want to see this garbage. If Be this gone. was a gong show, I would have already hit it. <laughs> Be gone. And he thoughts? just kept hitting it. <laughs> Ooh, what's this? Paris. Somewhere in Paris. Eiffel Tower. Hey, we... We, we called it Paris. Very dark. Very indie, probably. Oh, a game full, full of secrets, secrets worth revealing. Are we a taxi cab driver? And... Uh, Perry, your tank is full. Night call. Why, why do I think this is him? I don't think so. It's probably not going to be Ray, it's probably going to be PC. I could be wrong, but I would expect T. Oh, yeah, for real. <clears throat> so, games, game corruption, I mean, GameSpot. Had a comment there that they thought was wonderful. Oh, it's coming to Switch and Xbox One. Okay. Well. Well then. Not gonna play it. June twenty fourth. That's not too far away from now. Yeah, it's gonna be like a week at, like two weeks maybe. Oh, head up games. Oh. Retrorific. Oh. This looks familiar. Save your partner. Oh, it's blood. Yeah, I think this one might be him. Choose your gunslinger. Yeah. This was eighteen plus. Or together. No, this is gonna be like a, a party game. Not really a party, but you know. What do you call it when you're just shooting each other? Colt Canyon. Yeah. All that looked awesome, but it highlights my number one problem with showcases like ours, Justin. We show you all this cool stuff, and then you have to wait months to play it. Yo, I feel you, Greg. That's why we at the Gorilla Collective are putting it into that right now. This next round of games share one amazing concept. They are all... Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba. Someone go bye-bye. Did they drop the frame rate or something? They crashed.
They crashed. Slay the spire or something? Space shooter. I mean, it looks pretty cool. Vicious cosmic giants. I think we published the press release on this thing. It just came out recently. Oh, it did. I think so. I mean, it looks pretty cool. They they were like, you want a code? And I was like, I don't know. Just, yeah, cool. rigid force. But yeah, I was like, nah. Yeah, now it's available. Oh no, the heads up. They love making painfully mediocre games. Huh? Yeah. This game looks so. So it looks uh, eight bit, maybe sixteen bit. It's almost like your Samus. Well, that's what they cloned. Copy. It's almost like that was a Metroid, it's not that. Yeah. This game is very original, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Out buddies. Okay. Oh. My own blood, fantasy violence, my own language. Well, yeah, this one won't surprise me. Ow, what's kicking me? Peter oh, is. Kicking you. That's not her. Oh, another 8-bit looking game. It is coming to Nintendo Switch only. Well, we know the Switch can handle 8-bit graphics. Yes. Usually. Yes, we know Nintendo. Nintendo loves that. Nintendo probably partnered with them. Probably. They crash again. Yes, they crashed again. They should have given us the Jeopardy music. Larian Studios. Well, this one that wouldn't shock me either. Consider your predicament. One star, one star two tenants. Now, and it's like they just then they skip, like they forget. I could fix it all, like that. Try to kill me. I don't like this game. Yeah, no. Not knocking on your door. Not again? No, 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 please don't. Please don't crash again. Please. They did not bring the mover right back, they're just... Wow. There's like 14,000. Th so oh, Baldur's Gate. Three. Well, they access August 2020. I mean, there's so many people maybe. watching maybe. this. There's like 14, maybe, thousand. <coughs> okay, no. So, I mean, people are excited for new games. Okay. Da -da -da! Da -da -da! Hi everybody, and welcome to community update number three for Baldur's Gate 3. I have great news today, we finally locked down our early access content, and we decided that we're going to bring Baldur's Gate 3 for the very first time in your hands in August 2020. That's to say, maybe. And the maybe has everything to do, of course, with COVID-19. We've been hit like everybody else in the world. We've been working from home, which wasn't necessarily the easiest thing as game developers, because we like to huddle around the monitor and discuss about things that are happening in the game. But nonetheless, we managed to make a lot of progress since we last saw the game at PAX East. So we think we're going to make it, depending on a couple of things. One of these things, for instance, is I'm sorry, I was inconvenient. Or people have started returning to With masks. And if we can hit I mean, I, I know you'll be ready to get back to you. The game is looking amazing. It is Look at his typing. <laughs> or the lady, sorry. Yeah. Lady background is going crazy. Uh, the visual fidelity has increased a lot. 
And the cool part is that we're actually uh, we're going to launch a game in all the in early access, but we still have an entire development period to go after that. So it's going to look even better by the time it's finished. Okay. Uh, you will see things like improvement in combat. Uh, we did a lot of changes in how okay. combat flows, how the camera moves, uh, how the initiative system works. Uh, the all together, they make for a much more refined combat experience, which is a lot of fun. I can tell you that. There are changes in the way that we do our narrator. That was something that we had a lot of feedback on. Uh, there's uh, the integration of the rule set is getting better and better. So we're getting a really good handle on how to do things, and so it feels like a, a really, really cool game with a lot of depth when you play it now. Here's the really cool part. You don't have to wait until August 20 to, 20 to see what I'm talking about because we'll do another gameplay live stream and we'll do it just in front of Dungeons & Dragons Live on June 18th. And you will decide for me whether or not I'm going to kill a hobgoblin that deserves to be killed. Next Friday. Or if I'm going to descend I'm very much looking forward to it. So I'm very much looking forward to it. So I hope to see you there on June 18th. It's going to be a lot of fun. Take care. Bye-bye. I don't think you'll see me. Unless you're watching our stream, then you'll see me. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if we'll be straight. Hey there, Mr. Someone. How you doing? You're having a good day? Good day, oh, mate. Oh, is it? Heroes. True RPGs don't have cards in them. Hey, this is Heroes, I guess, we know. Happy Saturday back at you. Yes. We're doing an FG Reacts to the Gorilla Collective. Uh, oh, we got two more after this. Events. We will be later doing the... Uh, PC. PC gaming show, FG reacts to the PC gaming show, and, and then, then one the, the future game show reacts to both of those today. We go. So okay. doesn't know if he's gonna um, stream later tonight or not. Probably not. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna stream Animal Crossing on Twitch tonight or not. Peter streamed uh, Destiny 2 this morning. Hey, dance battle, dance fight, bro. Hmm. A true RPG. You know that guy? He, he should have said, honey, where's my pants? <laughs> exclusive. Exclusive. Okay, what's, what's this exclusive? Oh. What? Uh, what's his name? Ghost Rider. They're making another game for him. But it's Ghost Rider Cowboy. With blood, so it's probably him. Yeah. Well, off here in west of dead. Probably. Probably, yeah. <clears throat> How'd they get away with the flaming skull and not? I think Marvel's gonna come calling say, hey, flaming skull, that's our thing. <laughs> well, technically, the flame dude was part of Marvel before. Before they decided to make a game for They've done Cowboy Western Ghost Rider. Like, what about that Marvel Strike Force? Not Strike Force, that other than announced last year. Strike Force is an app. I'm not, I'm not talking about that Marvel one. Remember the other one they announced? I think the graphics are pretty ugly in this, personally. I don't like the colors. Oh, well, it's, it's terrifying. What do you think? I don't, I don't yeah. like it at all. Not my thing. I mean, people can have their opinions. I am not big on indie games. What? What I really despise a lot of indie games nowadays is... They're too much blood. Either they're copying something, giving it an 8-bit or 16-bit experience. Or, they're like, we have to be artistic. And I'm like, what? Oh, Why? Na 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 now he has a revolver. Oh, that's an next right. That's the only stuff that works. Revolvers? Hi, I'm uh, Tarn Adams. Well, hey there, Tarn Adams. The of Dwarf, Dwarf Fortress. Games, and we game made a game, Dwarf Fortress. Fortress. That looks like an ASCII game. Um, that looks like something on DOS. That's pre-Windows. Yeah, on. coming to... DOS stands for the uh, Digital Operating System. Brother Zach and I have been working on that game. What, why are they showing us the files? 2006. Right now, to show you they're working on it. To Steam and Itch, and the biggest update about it is that we're bringing graphics to the game. Finally, they're bringing graphics to the game. Mike and Patrick are uh, what? It's been like what two years since and, uh, maybe more two years since I made another one. <laughs> Why you done this to me? It looks like Minecraft. Stop it. Minecraft looks better than this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Settlement management game. Uh, you have a 
group of dwarves that have to have a way bigger world make a fortress in a procedurally generated world. That's the first part we'll be looking at. So what we create will look like what we create. Procedurally generated. Randomly generated. History, historical simulation uh, uh, over a, a few hundred years, uh, if you want to let it keep running, where civilizations spread out, uh, trade with each other, fight, uh, with, each other, fight with each other, uh, fight with each other uh, magical, things happen, magical things happen, strange things happen. Uh, there's thousands, there's thousands, of thousands and thousands of little characters tracked that you might see when you, uh, start, playing you, might see when you start playing your game. There are uh, all, all sorts of edges between things that you can see here. Can we zoom in or anything? Okay. So My favorite button is delete this so game. The picture, is more the picture is a little more readable than it was before. Oh, uh, so it just squiggles and arrows. Oh, so now, so, so now they actually have real graphics yeah, from like the 8 bit era. You can see the instead the of the world as game. The, <laughs> the years pass. Oh, yeah, I said it's too. Wow. You just down your and you just plop down your dwarves and uh, start playing uh, in this environment. I ain't touching that. With it. So when you oh, start fortress, your you fortress, you have. Yeah, this still looks like a DOS game. Dwarves. And a wagon. Actually, I've seen DOS games look better. To start with. Like, but uh, else you would like to bring in the mining? Like a pick for mining, for a uh, buckets and ropes and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm food, hungry, uh, yeah. alcohol, very I'm okay important. Right now. General, I'll ideas, make a little bit. general ideas I'll that you want to just kind of lay out your things and dig into the mountain. I mean, do you know how to make a hammer and jelly sandwich? Allow people to start getting into their lives here. So the big, so thing, the big you thing, thing you, you might notice about this is that first, 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 first is that yeah, 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 for, for y'all don't, don't realize, uh, yes, yes, that was yes, a big first almost. project for the, the, what? the artists and all that kind of worked out. Yeah, 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 make yours first. That's fine. Uh, this uh, in 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 text, you can just show some upward triangles. There's a ramp go uphill. Uh, and, uh, you know, that worked for a few people, uh, but to try and generalize that, uh, we had to draw many, 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 many cases of uh, ramps and get them displayed. Um, and, well, I'm sorry that ramps are so cool. hard for Here they are. Hmm. Uh, we have all, all sorts of ramps and things. Uh, and move on to the next game already. Then there's... Lots of workshop lots of pictures to do, pictures. lots of item pictures uh, to do. I'm okay. Uh, our dwarves are all just sort of just one right now. placeholder dwarf just right now, but we'll have different, uh, faces, different faces and clothing and things for the different appearances, the, of, the dwarves, different appearances the of the dwarves. All the dwarves have back a... The back in the, the text version, there's just a giant text, 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 text paragraph describing what the dwarves are saying. They look the same. They look the They're like, oh, the dwarves have different outfits and... I'm like looking at them like they all look the same to me. Yeah, they sure do. The text graphics that are still around the edges. Unless that little blue blob is a floor. This is all. I don't know what that blue thing is. Uh, as we're working are they digging into a mountain or something? Should be, should be uh, Looks like it. pretty cool by the time we're done. Uh, and we have. Uh, you know, a lot more uh, to, to work on, and then that means a lot more kind of news to share as we go, as we update the pictures and the, also the usability of the game, uh, so that it'll be easier to get into. It would be better if it wasn't so monotone. Yeah. Okay. At least he gives us a smile at the end. Next game, Iron, Iron Gate Studios. Studios. Yeah, no, there's no mess Okay, this world, what does this come to? Is ours. Sounds very trollish. Yeah. Is this a struggler or struggle? Struggle. struggle. Uh, someone has to be the struggler. Ow. I saw that coming. She got out of the way. Save your. Oh, it's going to be a Viking game. I miss the dwarf game now. <laughs> Valheim. Sign up for beta. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, it'll be on the PC gaming show. Yay! <laughs> well, thanks for telling us that.
Machine ID V1 approaching hell. Find a weapon. Mankind is dead, blood is fuel. Hell is full. Okay. Oh. Someone won the remake Doom. With the same graphics. I I don't run what which one of the dudes like an old one? Like the sixteen bit Doom. Is that an older one? Very old one, yeah. Uh like a Windows 3.14 version. So retro Doom. Retro Doom, Wolfenstein. Original Wolfenstein. Yeah, not my thing. And the blood is overused. This got me thinking though recently, I was, I was thinking about you know, some different games I like to start streaming again. And, uh, I think one of these days, I need to go back and do Gauntlet of Legends. Like, just stream the entire... We did one video of it. Just need to do, like, the whole game. Just stream it. I don't know why I started talking about that, but, I mean... Huh. Need something more interesting than Ultra Kill. Yeah. Gauntlet. Play it, you know, now. Yeah, that would be a waste of money, I agree. Oh. It's a switch. Kill the Nintendo Switch Halloween 2020. Okay. Are you ready to find the next game you'll love more, more than anything else? That's the worst transition of the show, I promise. Check out these gameplay updates from some of our closest friends. Okay. Does that mean they pay you a lot of money? Exclusive. Make some Please, Please stand, stand by. Two. Eleven-bit studios. Hi everyone, and welcome to Eleven-bit Studio Show in the Gorilla Collective. You know us from the titles like Frostpunk. This War of Mine, Moonlighter, Children of Morda, nope. and more. No, don't, don't know them. I don't care. Up, let's visit the home of the Bergson family, the protagonist of Children of Morda. Oh, look, it's going to be every system. RPG, set in a mesmerizing fantasy yeah. world. It's just got a new game plus free update. But there's more content coming. Oh, more content, yeah. Here are a few words from Wait, I might have heard of Children of Morda. We might have yeah, published press studio. Hey guys, we hope you're doing okay. Luckily, we are fine and we're working harder than ever. Children of Morda has a very special place in all the hearts. And we also know that it just looks like another 16 bit action adventure RPG. DLC has added a new game class mode to the game. But this is not the end of the story of Children of Morda. Obviously, there's more content coming. We know that when it comes to RPG games, New characters are in high demand. This is exactly what we focus on in our next free update called Persons Ready. We will be bringing you a brand new playable character to enjoy. Our brave hero merchant Will from Moonlighter is never tired of adventures. Between Dimensions yeah. DLC has just released on console. Moonlighter sounds vaguely familiar. now Will is back in his backpack to discover the lands of mobile gaming. Xbox Game Pass. Here's Javier Jimenez, Digital Sun CEO. Hi there, folks. This is Javier. Hey, Javi. Hi. It's already been two years since we released Moonlighter. Reminds me of coffee for some reason. It's close to Java. We are celebrating this anniversary by releasing the Moonlighter DLC between dimensions. Yeah. Just, you know, like, open. Oh, DLC. It makes me want to sing the Moonlight Moonlight song, but we get copyrighted in the same amount, so. Later this year. What, Peter? Moonlighter is going to be something quite fresh and quite new because we want to rebuild it. I don't want to sing the Moonlight song. I'll sing the Moonlight song. It's probably better than this game. This is a new graphic user interface that has new ports to combat. So we think it's going to be not like a simple port, but something that is actually working as a native game. We want to share with you some bits of videos we have in the current version. He's fighting a tree. Take a glimpse into what's coming. And that's... It's not to worry about a tree that can tag you. 
Yeah. Frames of that. The scouts have brought news from the forest, coldest corners of Frostland. The population of New London. London. New London. New London frozen. But was it all worth it? Here's a special reveal from, reveal from yeah. Frostpunk's lead designer. Yeah. UK, UK went conquered. Russia. I didn't know you can't do that, bro. In January, it got a prequel expansion called The Lost Autumn, which enables you to see what happens just before the Oh, yes, Okay. This new expansion tells the story of citizens of New London on a special assignment after the Great Storm. What was the Great Storm? It opens not I guess a big iceberg, I guess. In the Frost Sun universe. No. It fits you against new challenges and new <laughs> gameplay mechanics. Probably global warming. That's what sent us the ice age. You may ask it all cold. Brand new frozen board is set, and the pieces are moving. What does it mean for you as the leader? And what fate awaits your society? Well, for now, I'm not going to. I can tell you what happened with my society. Let's just take a look at this short teaser <laughs> we've prepared. Quite talented at that. Oh, I guess we. They say that the snow is dead. I guess we need to see clips. But we've learned to the contrary. There's Frostpunk. Are you some knife of jelly or what? Making is a uh, more fascinating secret. The next one should be really the board game. especially for fans of board games. Frostpunk is going offline. Hey, that's Jacob Bizemski from Glass Party Games to unveil this mystery. Hi there. I'm Kuba Wisniewski from Glass Party Games. I guess. I guess. As the co-author of the highly acclaimed This World of Minecraft. Now together with Adam Fakir, author of the best-selling Nemesis the board game, and my team, I'm super hyped to bring you a nice call tabletop experience. Ladies and gentlemen, Frostpunk is officially going and gone. The core gameplay will be, as you could imagine, morally complex and highly, highly challenging. We're working very hard to bring the emotions from the video game to your table. I just, I don't know. I'm not as big on video games made into board games, I just don't... No! It's like the Lego Mario, that's kind of cool, but I'm not going to sit there and go build this, like, no. Mario level and Legos, and then go Mario go, do 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 and no. Oh, there's wow. a Goomba, let me jump on him. He's not squashing. That's not all. See, there's some exciting adventures ahead of us. That's not all, bro. We're also working on some exciting in-house projects, as well as collaborating with other studios like Fool's Theory. Fool's Theory. A new game from Digital Sun Games is coming as well. And trust us when we say, there's more where that came from. Well, as long as you keep making money, I figured you'd make more games. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. Facebook. How long was that? Subscribe to the newsletter to always be up to date with the latest news. It's going and Stay going safe. and going. Thanks for watching. It says, "Thanks for watching." Well, that was the 11 minute studio. They had their own little special section, which is just their video, their stuff spliced together. Ah. Uh, really, this is just a collection of different companies' videos. Ah, uh, okay. Oh. This looks horrible. Is this good or are you thinking you want to have? That's good. Thank you. I'm about to make those in the second year. I get my second year. Thanks. Oh, okay. Can I pick this food? Pick it nice and red for one. Why was this need to be a game? That's bloody too. Yeah, I'm not here for the ending games, I'm here for something else. Game is Aiden Show. I don't know what they're gonna have.
No. And the story has... Echoes of Watchmen. Um... Generally bad thing. Headshot. Games of 2020. like so many games I've seen. Just all steam and cinder. Brownie. How much pepperoni do you want now? Um, I want just three on one, one, one of the pieces of bread and then just put it on top. So if y'all didn't hear that, Peter's stepped out for a bit. He's gotten a little bored with all these indie games. Oh, I know. 
Hazel have much of a place over there so I could pass in the yard. Oh, I mean, if you want me to move and send them back, I could. I thought I'd go upstairs for that. Almost over, Literally people. Got Listen, yeah, you, know you got nowhere else to go. We Literally nowhere else to go. Like but we also know that if you're like us, you're antsy for more of that, new, new, hotness. More of that well, new hotness. Well, before we hand the stream insider, off to the Paradox here Insider, more. here are a couple more world okay. premieres. I'm a fan of more world premieres. World premiere. You got anything you like this for? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, may may maybe that that game where you're uh, doing tricks. Oh, you're into yeah. I mean, that's one. But. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Goner? Goner? What? Mm. They, like, did Goner with, with two ends instead of one end. Please. Hideo Kojimi, please don't block my number. I'm following this is a routine. Oh, there's crab. Oh, wait, are we going to do a crab rate on the dance? Mr. Krabs? There's so many of them. It's King Crab. <laughs> it's King Crab. I think someone's like getting food. Oh, but. Well. Oh, gore. Yeah. Hey, what's that plunger doing there? Oh! Okay. Why? Um, what? 
blocked it out. But just why? Just play. Put some stupid clothes on. This just makes no sense. Okay then. Just die already. And old people may have sandbox. That's not one I'll touch. I'm not touching that with a 40 inch pole. 10 inch, 10 foot pole. Whatever. We're trying to make more memes, okay? You do that. I'm bored, okay? Thanks. The worst game I've ever seen in my life. I've seen worse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up my section of the Gorilla Collective's first day, first day but we are up far from done. Paradox up next is Paradox the Paradox Insider, where Paradox Interactive is going to share deeper details of the latest games they've been it. working on. Paul Let's Paul check in with Paula Talon over the Paradox Studio. How's it going over there, Paula? Hi Greg, we're doing We've been great. Watching the show. We've been watching the show, watching the show and uh, we love it. So I'm just a little bit annoyed that we have to start our own presentation because that means we have to stop watching all of the cool content. So if I just change the name, what's going to do? I'm sure your stuff is also reasonably cool or at least fun. Well, we're about to find out. The Paradox team have been working from home lately, so we're super excited to show the world outside what we will work on. Yeah. Cool stuff. I'm looking forward to it. So let's start the countdown and stay tuned for Paradox Insider. Start the countdown. Alright, so do I stop it or just change the name? You have to stop it. I just look how I'll stop it. Take care of my boy. And then I guess we have this one next. <laughs> 